A few months ago, I showcased 10 secrets and facts in Undertale that many people did not know. That video did really, really well, and a lot of people asked me in the comments, are there any other secrets you know besides these? So today, we'll be covering 10 more facts about Undertale that you probably don't already know. Only the most hardcore fans will know about some of these, so get ready. Before we get into the video, I just wanted to quickly mention the majority of my viewers aren't subscribed to the channel. Subscribing helps me a lot against the YouTube algorithm and helps support the channel, so I'd appreciate it a lot. I have a lot more niche Undertale knowledge to share, so if you want to see a third video in this series, let me know in the comments below. Thank you, and enjoy the video. During battles in this game, you can hold down X or Shift to have your soul move at half speed. This helps for precision against certain enemy patterns. If you didn't know this existed, don't worry, the game never once mentions it. In fact, lots of people thought this mechanic was invented by the fan game TS Underswap because it actually explains it. The mechanic also wasn't present in Deltarune until a later patch after Chapter 2 had already been released. But enough about that. It's Undertale, so you already know there's some jank with this ability. While fighting the magic enemy, you can use the Talk Act to cause your controls to become inverted. This works as you'd expect, until you try to use the Slow Soul ability. If you hold X and try to move right by holding left, you'll move at an incredible speed to the right. This is most likely due to a copy-paste issue in the code, as the slowdown code does not account for the correct direction while your controls are inverted. This strangely also occurs in the Papyrus date sequence of all places. While selecting Papyrus's clothing to progress, holding X causes your soul to drift to the right, again most likely a result of a copy-paste issue. Oh, and since I'll never get a chance to talk about this anywhere else, you can use Slow Soul Mode in version 1.0 of Undertale by holding F9 due to a debug mode left over. Whoops! Did you know it's actually possible to escape Sans' final attack before he falls asleep? This exploit can be performed by first consuming three, or at least three, CT items in order to max out your soul's speed before reaching the final attack. While we're on the way there, here's a couple helpful Sans tricks for you evil gamers replaying the genocide route. During any of his slam attacks, if your keyboard allows for it, you can simply hold all four arrow keys to completely dodge this move. Also, during his final attack, when he slams you into the left wall here, hold right such that you jump off the wall on the first possible frame. If done right, these bone columns will no longer be able to hit you due to you offsetting your position, giving you a big advantage in this attack. Okay, back to the exploit now. Once Sans traps you and begins monologuing at you, hold X to use slow soul mode and move towards the edge of the box. By releasing X just before touching the border while maxed out on CT, you'll actually be able to bypass Sans and slightly nudge the box to the left before getting teleported back. You can do this over and over and over again and eventually move the box all the way to the left and attack Sans while he's still talking, resulting in this humorous glitched cutscene. If you're wondering why this isn't used in speedruns, it's because it both takes too much time to set up and actually way too much time to execute. But hey, it's really funny, so there's that. Seriously, this took me like 10 minutes in order to execute. Speaking of the genocide route, there's actually a way to speed it up considerably compared to what most of you are probably used to. Every room in Undertale has a certain amount of steps taken before an encounter can show up. This initial number is usually pretty low and will increase with every single enemy that you kill in the area. However, what a lot of people don't know is that each room actually has a second count of steps for all encounters after the first one, and this number is substantially larger than the first number. This is a nice quality of life feature in the pacifist and neutral route of the game, allowing you to walk around in rooms without getting endlessly bombarded by encounters like a Pokemon dungeon. However, this has the reversed effect in the genocide route, extending grind times far longer than they're probably actually supposed to be. This can be avoided by simply changing rooms quickly every single time you kill a monster. It's worth noting that this does not apply to any room in the core area, as those rooms all have genocide route specific encounter step counts, so you don't need to do this trick there. If you ever replay this route, here's a little trick for you to make it a lot faster. Have you ever sent Temi to college? By paying her 1000 G, you can send her there, which will unlock the ability to purchase the extremely overpowered Temi armor. 
This armor has all the benefits of the other armors, giving you the passive healing of the apron, the attack boost of the cowboy hat, and the added invulnerability frames of the cloudy glasses. A lot of people probably know it exists, but have never used it due to the incredible price tag of 9,999G. What only a few of you probably know is that the Temi armor's price decreases every single time you die. This eventually caps out at 25 deaths, making the price of the armor 750G, which is a lot more affordable. If you're wondering how you can get this much money, it's pretty easy, especially when you have both dimensional boxes. Gerson will sell cloudy glasses for less than you can sell them to Temi for, so just fill up as many inventory slots as you can with glasses and sell them all, and repeat the process until you have enough money. What a lot of people didn't know, and even myself until very recently, is that the code here is actually broken. You were supposed to be able to purchase the Temi armor for 500G after 30 deaths, but this doesn't work. In the code, the game has a long series of if statements checking your death count and lowering the price of the third shop slot to match. As you can see here, the final price accidentally modifies the fourth slot instead of the third, which doesn't exist, and therefore this doesn't work as intended. If you're curious what I mean, slot 1 in the game is actually slot 0 in the code. Have fun paying extra! Okay, that all was a bit complicated, so let's cover something super simple that tons of people do not know and isn't well documented. A lot of players will immediately unequip the bandage the moment they find a new piece of armor, as it provides no defense and even becomes a healing item when taken off. However, you might not want to actually do this, as the bandage has a hidden skill that's super useful for those wanting to play through the game quicker, such as a repeat playthrough. When the bandage is equipped, you will never fail to flee an encounter. The success rate is fixed to be 100%. Normally, any armor makes you only have a chance to flee, but the bandage is always 100%. This makes it extremely useful for repeat playthroughs where you won't get hit as much and don't need the added defense. Speaking of equipping armor, let's talk about the most effective way to beat the Metaton EX fight. Last video, I talked about the secret word Hotfine Entecute that give you the maximum amount of points. But did you know that you can actually beat this fight so quickly you can skip the SA altogether? By equipping an armor piece during this fight, you'll gain 1500 ratings, way more than any other action by a wide margin. By equipping the ribbon, manly bandana, tutu, cloudy glasses, and then finally the apron, you'll quickly amass 12,000 ratings and the fight will end before Metaton can even ask his SA question, much less lose any limbs. This actually shows one of the very few instances in which Undertale doesn't have the usual attention to detail that it does. Even by ending this fight so quickly that Metaton never loses his arms or legs, the sprite afterwards will always be a torso regardless. If there's ever any kind of Undertale remaster or update in the future, I would love to see this acknowledged and new interactions added since the sprite for a fully limbed Metaton already exists in the pacifist epilogue. Since we're already in the core, you're probably familiar with the final puzzle to deactivate this laser. You can either go do the traditional puzzle on the left side known as the Sage's Path, or head north to the Warrior's Path to flip this switch after fighting some monsters. What a lot of people don't know is there's a third solution and the game actually tells you this plainly in the text. The text here states, I cannot fight, I cannot think, referencing the Warrior and Sage Paths respectively. Then it says, but with patience I will make my way through. This isn't flavor text, it's very literal. Simply standing in this room for over a minute causes the laser to disappear, allowing you to progress. And they said being lazy wouldn't get me anywhere. Here's an extra bonus fact for you all provided by a commenter from the previous video. Yamal Paka mentioned that it's possible to get on top of the bar table in the genocide route, and this is completely true. If you look at the hitboxes for this room, you'll notice the gap between the solid blue hitbox is covered by this NPC. In the genocide route, this NPC vanishes, allowing you to walk on top of and behind the bar where you're clearly not supposed to be. However, I did some extra research and it turns out this room has another hitbox issue, but only in version 1.0. In this version, you can simply walk out of bounds at the bottom of the room by holding the left wall and walking down. Seems like Grilby's bar is just full of funny oversights, huh? Speaking of oversights, Toby Fox once lamented that Undertale doesn't have a run button. Well, as it turns out, you can move at double speed under some circumstances. In this room in Waterfall that's sometimes referred to as the Disney room, by holding up and down you can walk at double your normal speed. This works in any place where there's only a single pixel gap between hitboxes, so you can also perform this behind the fridges in the True Lab if you like. 
I think I'll still take that run button though. I've watched quite a few people play through Undertale casually, and many times they'll struggle on this puzzle here, found at the north end of the vent room in Hotland. Before I reveal the extremely extravagant solution, there's actually a secret here if you fail enough times. Normally, the text will say restart when you mess up and the puzzle resets, but there's a one in a hundred chance for it to instead say restaurant. Very few people know about this, since it's uncommon for people to intentionally fire and mess up the puzzle instead of, you know, just trying to solve it. Anyway, if you've ever floundered around on this puzzle for a long time, it turns out the solution is actually incredibly easy. You just press left, right, and then fire. Yeah, it was that easy the whole time. For the final secret of the video, I want to cover something I have never seen any other person talk about unless I myself showed it to them already. In the ruins, there's this room with the cracked tiles where we have to use the bottom section to find out the path on the top. Pretty simple, right? Well, just in case someone was having a really bad day, Toby Fox had them covered. If you managed to fail this puzzle 10 times, Attempting to defail it again caused the cracked floors to deactivate with a little jingle for good measure. This prevents you from failing the puzzle again and allows you to walk where you otherwise wouldn't be able to. Pretty cool, right? It gets better. Being able to walk over the cracked floors exposes that this little bit of wall here actually just has no collision at all, allowing you to walk right out of bounds. You'll be stuck between two hitboxes that extend far, far out to the right, but eventually you can walk past them and get lost in the void forever. Heh, getting lost in the endless void. Reminds you of somebody, doesn't it? I can't quite put my finger on it, though. Nah, it's probably not a very big deal. 